much are you paying for our federal government to operate? On average, American taxpayers spend about $1 billion per day on the federal workforce. And the government is only getting bigger. NTD's Melina Wisecup has the story. The number of executive employees is at a modern day high. There are currently over 2 million federal employees, footing the bill American taxpayers at $140 million per hour. This latest report by government watchdog group OpenTheBooks.com maps out how the government has expanded over the years, especially during the pandemic. And Congress appropriated about $5 trillion for COVID aid and COVID relief. This blew out the executive agency payroll because when you spend more, you do need more employees to get the money out the door. During the pandemic, uh, Dr. Anthony Fauci made about $17,000 more than what he made in 2019. Fauci out earns all of them. He out earns the President of the United States. Last year he made $434,000. He out earns four star generals in the United States military. And not only is the government taking more from paychecks, but its regulations are also seeping more into personal lives. For example, Congress right now is working to pass that $3.5 trillion budget bill. And in it, there's a rule that would increase fines that companies would pay if they violate Biden's vaccine and testing mandates. For each instance of non-compliance with OSHA regulation, they would make that 70,000. Rather than 70,000 on the willful and repeated violations, they would make that 700,000. The Biden administration is playing hardball. We expose their strategy and their strategy is very aggressive. They want to bankrupt companies that don't comply with the vaccine mandate. Also in the budget bill, Congress is working on a proposed rule for the IRS to monitor Americans' bank accounts, both business and personal accounts. Banks would have to give a detailed report to the IRS every year, noting when people make a transaction more than $600. Lawmakers are planning to increase that amount to $10,000, but they still aim to keep the IRS bank account monitoring in place. Reporting in Washington, D.C., Melina Wisecup, NTD News. And now, a special report on Australia's pandemic measures. We hear from demonstrators on strike against vaccine mandates, as well as a journalist who's been covering anti-lockdown protests and strict enforcement of stay-at-home orders. NTD's Grace Coulter has the story. Some of the videos coming out of Australia, especially from Victoria, have shocked the world. The region has some of the strictest pandemic measures in the world and some of the most heavy-handed enforcement. Even Florida Governor Ron DeSantis commented on the severity of the situation. I mean, is, is Australia freer than China, communist China right now? I don't know. The fact that that's even a question tells you something has gone dramatically off the rails. Strikes against vaccine mandates took place in at least two dozen regions. Workers across multiple sectors affected by the mandate came together. NTD's Australia correspondent Alex Joseph was in Melbourne, Victoria, ahead of the strike. Alex Joseph for NTD News. We are here in central Melbourne. We've been here all week following the mass protests that took place Saturday and Monday. Now, Melbourne is experiencing its sixth lockdown, the longest lockdown in the world. Here on the ground, we have seen that there's not many people around, but there is heavy police presence. We are here at Parliament House where there are literally coach loads of police officers to keep the peace at the threat of protests. The demonstrators here are mainly nurses and teachers. They were peaceful, socially distanced and most of them masked. But that didn't stop an arrest from taking place. This woman holding a banner was arrested for not providing her name and address to police. Due to the pandemic, Victoria police have been given emergency powers that expand their ability to detain citizens. The woman was soon released. She told NTD that because she didn't resist arrest, the officers had no grounds to hold her. Victoria police said in a statement that two others participating in the demonstrations were arrested for the same reason. This is supposed to be a democratic country. I don't know what's happened to Australia. I certainly don't know what's happened to Melbourne. This strike ended with the police dispersing the demonstrators. 
I find the significant police presence very, very threatening. I find the footage that has been revealed from the trades, the tradies press protests in the city and having that armoured vehicle of which the police jumped off and shot the running tradies in the back with their rubber bullets. I, I was absolutely shocked. NTD's The Nation Speaks talked with Melbourne-based reporter Avi Yemeni from Rebel News. He's been on the ground covering protests and excessive police enforcement measures. He says many officers have told him privately that they don't agree with what's going on. Just like uh, the wider community, I think there's big division within the police force. There are certainly some, even a lot, unfortunately, of cops that... Uh, you know, it turns out they joined the police force for the wrong reasons and they're loving this power trip. And but some, he says, have told him they're quitting because they aren't OK with enforcing the government's strict lockdown measures. Grace Coulter, NTD News. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Don't forget to catch all of our programs on TV. NTD Evening News is on every weekday at 6.30 p.m. Find your local NTD channel at ntd.com slash tv. Everything that's reported on television isn't always true. But it should be. NTD, the power of truth. Available 24-7 on television and streaming platforms.